Hello and welcome to the Science Fury. In this video I will show you how to build a photodiode particle detector. Unlike a Geiger counter it doesn't need a high voltage power supply and you can even do alpha spectroscopy to analyze what radioactive elements are present. But more on that later in the video. The detector was developed by Oliver Keller and he made all plans, the circuit board design and even an online oscilloscope publicly available. The detector has two variants, one that can detect beta radiation and one that can also detect alpha particles. In this video I only made the beta variant but in the next one I will make the alpha particle detector as well. Post production journey here. Um, I made the alpha version, however, it is not working. So there's a chance I can't get it to work, and obviously, then there won't be a video about it. But we will see. Alright, before we start building, how does it even work to detect radiation with a photodiode? Usually instead of a photodiode, a so-called photomultiplier tube and a scintillator is used. When radiation hits the scintillator crystal, it converts it into light. This light is super weak and contains only a few photons. These photons get captured by the photomultiplier tube, which converts it into an electrical signal and amplifies it. At the end you get an electrical pulse that's proportional to the energy of the radiation. This is obviously more complicated and expensive than a Geiger counter, but the great thing is it can basically get replaced by an ordinary photodiode. For that the photodiode needs to be kept in the dark and when radiation hits the diode it creates a charge difference that can be measured as an electrical pulse. However this pulse is extremely weak and needs to be amplified to be detectable. And that's exactly what the circuit does. The pulse can then be fed into an audio input of a computer to count and analyze the pulses. Okay, but now to the build. On the website Oliver Keller provided files for a circuit board. I first tried to build it with a perf board and I did some other things differently and surprise it didn't work. So I definitely suggest to order the circuit board and build everything according to the plans if you want it to work at the first try. At least at JLC PCB not sponsored, the minimum order is 5, so I will build the alpha particle detector as well. On the website you can get the parts list with all the necessary components. You also need a metal box to put in the finished circuit to protect it against electromagnetic interference. You also need a BNC port and a BNC to aux cable to get the signal from the detector out of the shielded box. In the metal box I cut a hole big enough for the BNC port. I just made the BNC to aux cable myself by cutting a BNC cable in half and soldering the outer shield on ground of the aux plug and the inner cable on the outer contact. Ok, but now to the circuit itself. I started by soldering the resistors. For the electron detector version R8 gets bridged with a wire, but for both versions the components are a bit different. Next I soldered the capacitors. It's important that C5 is soldered on the other side so the IC can fit there. I did that with C8 as well, but for that it doesn't matter I think. Last but not least I soldered the op amp IC on the circuit board. Then I attached the 9 volt battery clip and the BNC port to the circuit. Now you can see that instead of the photodiodes itself, I used a scintillator crystal with photodiodes I got on eBay. Normally just the photodiodes get soldered on the appropriate place on the circuit board with the cathode to the middle. I then fastened the BNC port in the metal box and soldered the pulse output to it. I just put the whole circuit in the box with a piece of paper so it's not shorting out anywhere. But you can also use the holes on the circuit board to screw it down properly. 
I then closed the lid and plugged in the BNC to aux cable. You can try to plug the aux plug directly into a computer, but it's recommended to use an external sound card because the signal might get filtered out as noise. To record the pulses I used the program PRA, but when testing the circuit for the first time, it's recommended to use the online oscilloscope supplied by the creator of the circuit. Alright, now I will quickly show how the online oscilloscope works, but it's pretty self-explanatory. You have you select your microphone, uh, I think that's this one, and confirm, and now you can select uh, yeah first you select if you have the electron detector version or the alpha spectrometer version we have the electron detector version and here you can raise or lower the trigger level and yeah if you have a zero then it's it's counting already so uh yeah for the electron detector version the minimum is 500 for the alpha spectrometer, the uh, minimum here is minus 50. I will use still the alpha spectrometer because I have a better minimum for first testing. Uh, I find this better. All right, and when you're plugging in, you can see, you should see something happen on the oscilloscope. Right now I have something happening because uh, the box is still not closed up. We will close this up now. Okay, so obviously the photo diode is detecting light if it's not closed up. Then we will put this somewhere to the side and we can then reset and then we can wait for some pulses. All right, I went ahead and got a thorium lantern mantle to have something radioactive. And you can see we have the pulses here. And it's counting now the pulses and we can, if it's counting too much noise or whatever, we can lower the trigger level. Now we have a pretty high one and yeah, it's counting a lot of pulses but i think 150 100 is fine we can also change to the electron detector and i would just oops that's negative 500 is the minimum for that all right and then we can see here the pulses all right that's really it with the website, it's pretty easy to use. And yeah. With PRA, you can also do spectroscopy, but this didn't work for me. On the project website, they say the spectroscopy only works with alpha particles. So I guess I will build the alpha version of the circuit in the next video. But other than that, the circuit works great for its simple design. So next video I will build the alpha version, so subscribe if you don't want to miss that. Until next time, bye!